Hi, I'm Tracy, a grateful believer in Jesus Christ who came to celebrate recovery with addictions to methamphetamine, alcohol, and being a sexual abuser. We're in week 14. Week 14, wow. How are you doing out there? So I was thinking this week, We have breaking news. Christ Community Church Celebrate Recovery in Carmichael, California is open for business. That's right, Satan, you're in trouble now because it's on and cracking, Bubba. <laughs> they opened up with small uh, groups on last Sunday and it had great success. They all wore masks and kept social distancing in order. This week, they're gonna go with the full group, worship, message, and then open share groups. This is a fantastic thing. People are getting a recovery, and that's why this is breaking news. We'll now return you to what you were watching before. I'm Grant Newsman. This is RNN, Recovery News Network. We're, we're back? Hey, we're back. Um, that, that's true. That is breaking news. Celebrate Recovery is going on here in Sacramento area at Christ Community Church in Carmichael. Celebrate Recovery is on baby i am stoked i'm excited about it and it it comes at a great time because i've been thinking about um this talk for quite a while i love proverbs i don't know if you've ever read them but there's 31 proverbs they make a great daily devotion if you don't have a daily devotion jump into this day one of the month proverb one you're in uh the 13th day of the month you're in proverb 13 and so on very easy to keep track of and it's excellent proverbs is the book of wisdom which i don't know about you but i often need a lot of wisdom in my life especially godly wisdom and that's what this particular proverb which i fell in love with probably about my second year of consecutive reading the proverbs proverbs 7 it's a brilliant proverb and i really related to it because of my recovery uh, issues so the proverb starts out, uh, followed by Proverb 5 and 6, which are leading up to pro uh, wisdom being the greatest thing. The father is telling the son, this is what you need. Grab hold of it and hold on to it like it is your family member. Don't let go. It gets to Proverb 7, and then it switches to wisdom looking outside of a window throughout a town. And it says, wisdom sees a young man walking aimlessly, devoid of understanding. Now, I want to clarify something in this real quick. In, in, in these past Proverbs 5 and 6 and 7, it's talking about an adulterous woman. It's not a female thing. And the young man that's walking around isn't a male thing. It's a human thing. The adulterous woman that the Proverbs talk about are not just lustful sexual desires, but it's, it's desires of our hearts, which can be lustful. Desires of our mind which can also be lustful. They're the, the adulterous thing that take us away from the love that God has from us, the ultimate love in our life. So it's anything that draws us away. So I just wanted to make that clear. Get, get the image of, of the sexuality part out of it and just look at it as children of God. So wisdom is seeing this young person walking around aimlessly without any thought. They're walking down the street at night, it says, which is in the darkness and nothing good happens in the dark. Everything good happens in the light. And she comes out to meet him, it says, the adulterous woman. And she's been running around and she can't keep herself still, which is much like our addictions, right? So she comes out and she meets him and she says, where have you been? I've been looking for you. And she seduces him with her lips, the scriptures say. So it's all in what she's telling this person, the things that they want to hear. Hey, come and use this, you'll feel better. Hey, just take a little of that, it'll make your world great. Hey, you know what, if you spend a little money here, hey, you know what, if you lose weight, they're gonna like you more. All of these things adding up into an adulterous drawing us away from the love of God. It's, it's really interesting to me that it says she's, she uh, seduced him with her lips just in saying things, just in speaking to the thoughts 
in this person's heart and mind, drew him away. And it says he went like an ox going to the slaughter. Just walking into death. There's another verse at the end, and it says, until an arrow, an, an arrow struck his liver. And I instantly thought of hepatitis. All the years that I used drugs, alcohol, hepatitis could have been an easy get for me. But by the grace of God, I was spared from that. You see, the addictions in life are the adulterers. The hurts, the habits, and the hang-ups are the adulterers in our lives. They're the harlots that are coming for us trying to draw us away. Now I was thinking about this because in these 14 weeks of being not together, being out of recovery, I've talked to several people who have relapsed and that broke my heart. The relapse came because at a moment in time, there was a devoid of understanding. There was aimlessly walking about and sometimes at night. And I'm not, I'm not uh, absolved from any of this. I have had the thoughts and the feelings and the talking in my mind if, if I just did something else, I could feel better during this time. But it's remembering the tools of recovery. It's drawing close to God. The relapse lesson in Celebrate Recovery is brilliant on this and it's so very, very simple. The R is uh, Reserving a daily time with God, right? We learn this in the principles and the steps leading up to it. E is evaluate your heart. So Celebrate Recovery has the heart check. Are you, uh, are you hurting? Are you exhausted? Are you angry? Are you resentful? And are you tense? H-E-A-R-T. Hurting, angry, exhausted, resentful, tense. Any of those can lead to our relapse, our slip, our fall, our drop in our recovery because we're not concentrating on the beauty and glory of Christ. So the heart check is important. Spending time with God, checking out your heart, listening to Jesus to be a patient listener instead of just a complainer to the Lord. And he doesn't mind you complaining. He loves to hear you speak to him. But he wants to speak back to us also. So listening is important. Alone in quiet time. To step out of the, the things of the world. The news and all the doom and gloom that's out there. And just breathe. Plugging into God's power. Realizing again in the earlier principles that we are powerless to control our tendencies to, to hurt ourselves. To control our hurts, habits, and hang-ups, right? And then there's the S in relapse, and that's just slow down. Pump the brakes a little bit. Wisdom is a thing that God is giving to all of us, and he's given, to, given it to all of us who are in recovery right now. But wisdom isn't a thing that just hangs around idle. Wisdom wants to live inside of us. But yet, if we put wisdom on a shelf or in a house on a hill somewhere, then wisdom is just looking down upon us. And then we can get lost in ourselves and in our own thoughts and go wandering off in the dark of night. And there she is, that adulteress coming after us, telling me how wonderful I am and how great I am when I know that I'm not, but I sure like hearing that, telling me that they can take my pain away. Just, just one hit of this, just one drink of that, just one doing this. Just one pleasing that person that you shouldn't so that they will tell you what you want to hear. Whatever the hurt, habit, or hang-up is, it's manageable if we keep it in check. The tools of Celebrate Recovery help that, and I am so glad that the meetings are starting here at Christ Community Church real soon. To be able to lead worship, to be able to praise with all of you, to hear a lesson, to sit in groups and hear other brothers sharing. And there's going to be some tears, I'm sure, because there's been some hurts in these past 14 weeks. We're not absolved from pain in life. Pain in life is inevitable, but misery is an option. I choose not to be miserable this day. I'm going to continue to live and work my steps, and it's not necessarily going to be easy, but it's doable. And I'd like to do them with you because I'm stronger with other people around me. So hold on to your recovery. 
Don't let it fall away. And if you're not in this area, your Celebrate Recovery will be opening up soon. I'm praying for that. Please keep praying for that too. And until it does, go back and look at your, your uh, participant guides. Go back and look at any material you have. And if you don't have any material, go online to CelebrateRecovery.com. You're going to be able to find articles to read and hang on to. You're not alone out there. God loves you and I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. There's breaking news. Celebrate Recovery is back. And it's coming to your town soon. Stand strong in faith. Stand, stand strong in prayer for others as well as yourself. Recovery is good. This playground for Satan is shut down. God's operating room and ER is open. Triage is happening. And pretty soon the hospital beds will be filled, giving people the nourishment that they need through Christ Jesus. God bless all of you. I look forward to seeing you in the name of Jesus.